Hi everybody! Hi Tamar! Langsam mal genäht. So welcome to our Daenerys Season 7 review. This has been quite a season for Daenerys. So she started the season getting to Dragonstone, her ancestral homeland. From there... The first place. Her birthplace. Mm -hmm. And from Dragonstone, as she said at the end of, her, of the first episode... Shall we begin? From there mm -hmm. she was planning to conquer Westeros. Mm -hmm. She had the Dornish army. She had the Reach. She had the Dothraki, she had the Ironborn, the Unsullied. she had the Unsullied, and she uh, had three dragons. Mm -hmm. Three. And she ended uh, with no Ironborn. Mm, no sorry, Bob. No Dorn. No, Dorn just disappeared. Uh, no, yes. no High Garden. No High Garden. No and Tyrells. No Tyrells. And one dragon <gasps> less. One dragon less. That's two dragons. And also, she started the season as me, me, me. Yeah. I am the true heir. To the Iron Throne, yep. nobody had dragons before me, nobody had Dothraki before me, 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 me. But she ended the season on a different note. Yeah, it's, she started like, this is my destiny, I am the rightful heir, I was born to rule Westeros, and her main uh, conflict... <laughs> and she ended it with like committing herself to a mission that is greater than greater than her. Is there anything greater than her? I guess. There, 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 there is. Yeah, there is. There is. She's not even the right for her. So she doesn't even know that. She's like this mythical character. Right. The princess that was promised. The princess that was promised. The mother of dragon. Right. Misa Misa. Right. Not the nearest Targaryen. Something yeah. else entirely. And her entire arc since the beginning was like this try to get this elusive prize that you know she really didn't think about it she was like you know drawn to it automatically like this is what she's supposed right. to do what it's, it's mine yeah she doesn't even know how westeros looks like the smell of westeros you know anything so in her mother tongue is valyrian yeah she was pushing to it like this destiny that is beyond her and right. she adopted it to herself it seems like she gave up a little bit this you know wagnerian romanticism of like faith not in any gods not in myths and legends in myself in daenerys targaryen the world hadn't seen a dragon in centuries until my children were born the dothraki hadn't crossed the sea any sea they did for me i was born to rule the seven kingdoms and i will and like took a step back and right there's something more important exactly love maybe john, true love maybe john slash aegon was the one who knelt mm -hmm. to her you know but she's the one who gave up basically knelt to the realm yeah like gave up not gave up her you know dream of ruling westeros but uh, postponed it yeah postponed it and was willing to to compromise it and that was very, very hard because for six seasons she was like, that's my, I need to go back home, I need right. to go back home. And she sees the promised land right. and she has, you know, she has God's stick. Right, sort the of. dragons. The dragons and right. the armies. Right, and King's Landing is just is is right, right there. right over there. She and can she smell it. And she, have pe and, and she has people telling her, go and take it. Yeah. Take it. Mm -hmm. But she didn't take it. She didn't take it. She listened to advice that told her, don't be a dragon. Yes. So they played a little bit with that, with her being, uh, getting carried away and impulsive and not thinking ahead, mm -hmm. burning her enemies. A lot of references to her dad and to her genes, which are yes. the Targaryen madness genes. And comparisons to Cersei. Mm -hmm. But then she flipped that 180 degrees and she says, I'm committed to the realm. It's all about the cocks. At the end, it's all about the cock. How does that relate here? Men without cocks. You wouldn't find me fighting in an army if I had no cock. What's left to fight for? Gold. I spend my life around soldiers. What do you think they spend that gold on? Family. Not without a cock, you don't. Maybe it really is all cocks in the end.
And we saw her ruling Mirin. She wasn't as good, to say the least, ruling Mirin as she was taking, taking. Mirin mm -hmm. and taking all the other cities and getting everybody on board with her on her ships. Even last season, Dario told her, You weren't made to sit on a chair in a palace. What was I made for? You're a conqueror, Daenerys Stormborn. She was supposed to be invincible and she wanted to come in and burn King's Landing and burn everything. And people told her, do you expect to rule over the people that you just killed yeah. now? And she burned the Tarleys. That was like an example. So she was able to make that switch from being a, con a conqueror at heart mm -hmm. into thinking like a real ruler. Yeah, we compared her to like the uh, great conquerors of the past, especially Genghis Khan. Why him specifically? There was like similarities uh, in the sense that he united the horse people tribe yeah. by being this chosen one figure. And then he took this Mongolian tribe, which was now like a huge, you know, amalgamations of many, many, many yeah, horse yeah. people. Right. And took it out of the comfort zone of the right. um, steps of Asia. Right. Just pillaging and coming back, pillaging and yeah. coming back. And took them out and b he built an empire based on his military force and, his, and everything. So we expected Daenerys to think at least, or like to act more as a conqueror right. than a ruler. Because it's more interesting and it's more in line with her character. Yeah, it's much more in line in the character and uh, it's more interesting. Yeah, to make her make a wrong choice. So that was kind of uh, anticlimactic, I thought. Her being 100% devoted yeah. to John's mission so I didn't really understand why did they play throughout the season the thing that she will possibly or probably or maybe will go well, a little bit berserk. I, I still think every uh, references that made to her dad and her needs to release her dragon mm -hmm. and her being maybe impulsive and a little ginger. I think it's still going to play out. I hope it so. has to play out eventually. Otherwise, why bring it up yeah, 10 times why, during the season? Yeah, exactly. Why bring it up? Or maybe show us how she overcame her dragonness and show her internal struggle and then realize, no, I'm going to do this. It was just like... Yeah, but give her giving up her dragonness is uh, to her own detriment. Okay. Because her main power was, she says that in the books, because we see her thinking, keep moving. Keep moving, keep moving. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't hesitate. Every time she's hesitating, right. she's thinking like a politician. She's thinking like in terms of compromise and she loses something. Right. She loses something of her strength. And every time she on a dragon, don't think, you know, but here is thinking like a conqueror. But this it isn't, it was kind of the other way around. Tyrion told her, wait around. Mm -hmm. Don't go with your dragon to the north. And she was like, no, I have to do something. Yeah. And then she lost the dragon. Yeah. So that was kind of not in character. So I wouldn't give her a high marks this season for staying in character. The whole love affair with John, I still, you know, as, as, as much as it was expected, it's not explained enough. I mean, why yeah. John? Why, jo why not Jorah? Why not Jorah? Because he's in the friend zone. Yeah, but you, you know, can't come out of the friend zone. Either. I don't know. Why, why not Jorah? You he's, can't. He's, he's a tough man, you know. You want to sometimes, but you can't. So, uh, yeah. okay. Okay. There's nothing, the point is that there's nothing really e explaining her attraction to John. Uh, the fact that he won't kneel, he won't surrender himself, that's kind of attractive to people, someone that you have to work yeah. towards having him love you. And Jorah was like, I love you, I love you. That's kind of a turn off. The thing is, right. it was nothing in these six episodes or five episodes that were, they were together. There was nothing there really right, right. that built up this even sexual tension or, I mean, real sexual tension, not like fake sexual tension and that are close together in the right. cave or something like and that. And not only someone saying, there is sexual tension because yeah. you were looking at her boobs. Yeah, exactly. Boobs. Okay, but let's go through her list of mistakes. Yeah. Do you think she made a mistake by not burning King's Landing on episode two? Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily because that was, I mean, looking Why? back, yeah, she could have solved everything by just burning King's Landing, but yeah. that wasn't her point. She, she doesn't like to think of herself as a conqueror right, and a right, destroyer. Right. She right. wants to be a liberator. Right. She wants to break the wheel. Right. So that was in line with her character. Yes. It's like because she has this internal struggle between her dragonness and yeah. between being the breaker of chains. Exactly. And all that. The part of her character that is like, 
I don't want to be just this conqueror, but I, just, I want to rule and I want to be just. Right. Please love me. Exactly. Okay. She did make a mistake not burning Cersei in the parlay. The moment Cersei came back to the drama queen and said, okay, John, you're, not, you're gonna kneel to her, so I'm not gonna follow, she says, ah, okay. <laughs> you're still not gonna kneel, uh, Mrs. Cersei? Oh, <laughs> uh, you're still not gonna kneel? I'm gonna burn you right now. But instead of she's like, <laughs> right, we're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> hey, that was a bad plan. <laughs> and that, that was like honor, uh, out of character, and that could be, that could have been very interesting very interesting right. and but i it's think too bold for this, it's uh, too bold. For this yeah, show and I, I think it's been built up to that she needs to do something that will make her you know fall from grace in terms of uh, the viewers i think she already most of the viewers don't like her anymore we well, want her viewers, yeah. to fall from grace i'm not sure i think we like when we started talking about like what's supposed to be called the mad queen yeah. theory a lot of people uh, don't like that, and they're yeah. like feeling, no, she's the hero, she's supposed to do, but that's just boring. I don't yeah. know. I think she made a mistake by trusting Varys, even though Varys never appeared again <laughs> in the whole, the whole season. But I don't know, that seems like a real foreshadowing and all the talking about people choosing to follow yeah. her. Missan that chooses to follow her, the Ansali, the Dothraki, Jorah, yeah. and now Jon. Yeah. So that... And, and also Tyrion. And that has yeah. to switch around in order to make it interesting, I really hope. Not a mistake, she made a mistake listening to uh, Tyrion and mistakes not listening to Tyrion. Right. She shouldn't have had gone beyond the wall and saved Jon. That was impulsive. She saved Jon? Yeah, but she lost the dragon. And now the wall is gone. Maybe she shouldn't have let him go. She said, she no, I'm putting my go. foot down. You're not going because this plan is stupid. I don't know who came up with this plan. Yeah, yes, Dan and Dave. <laughs> right, she was like, Dan and Dave, this is a stupid plan. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not going to get a zombie because that plan. Okay. It seems like this season, uh, Daenerys' character kind of um, gave way to Jon's character. Like, I How think, so? like, I, I think in general, a lot of characters are just now like being second fiddle to the main characters. And now it, it seems like she's kind of a tool in Jon's uh, arc. He she accepted everything that he said. Yeah, and he needs her dragons, and him being Aegon, and not uh, Jon. So she needs to marry him yeah. in order to still be... Okay, okay. So let's go to these videos. Oh, prediction. In season eight, we're still thinking that she has to go mad for the lack for lack of a better word do yeah. something impulsive i'm thinking maybe maybe the maesters will come up with ways to destroy the dragons because we know that they had part in destroying the dragons yeah. the last time around so maybe they'll do something to that effect and she'll just go berserk and go with her one left dragon go to the citadel and burn it which could mirror the burning of alexandria's yeah. library i would like to see that actually the burning of um, old town it's also like symbolic in a way what was 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 will not be again another institution that pays a price right uh everybody for conservatism uh, yeah for everything you know right. this is about paying a price right right, right. and uh, the bitter street e ending is for everybody i guess or should be for everybody should not be. just for our favorite characters right so let's hope that happens something along those something lines. along the, uh, those lines i still expect her not to survive not to be queen and I expect the dark dragons to die and uh, men needs to prevail men humanity right, right needs to prevail the regular humanity like we have now yes. not magical humanity. breaking the wheel means also breaking this wheel the dragons you know because it's it's all about you know the whole wheel was starting turning uh, because her ancestor Aegon came with his dragons and changed everything. Right. And you can say that the white, if you look at it from whatever, 10,000 year history, so the White Walkers came once. Now they're coming again. Maybe they'll come. And the dragons, they were born, they were disappe disappeared, yeah. came back. Yeah, from the bird's eye, for, from the bird's eye view, this is also a wheel. So, so you think that she'll be instrumental in breaking both wheels, both the political wheel and the magical wheel, in some way. Her yeah. presence already broke some wheel, you know, because it's not only this skirmishes be between the houses of uh, Westeros, but also from outside. Right. And she has, and the, the dragons, which is a game-changing weapon, etc., etc. All I'm saying, it started, this story started uh, with the dragons being in the distant past. I will want it, hope mm -hmm. it, uh, hope for it, that the dragon 
will end up being part of the distant past. And right. And it's not that hard to kill them. No, it's not that hard to kill them. They're not that great. They're not trained, you know. I don't know. That's like they're not even Drogon almost died by a scorpion, whatever they yeah, call it, the, yeah. the big crossbow. And like five centimeters to the right, and he right. was already dead with the right. on top right. of him. So. so her death should be super symbolic, like dying for our sins and letting yeah. and letting go of her dream. I was born to rule the seven kingdoms. No, you were born to do something else. Yeah. You'll be John's Nisa Nisa, something yeah. of that sort. Maybe he will kill her. Maybe Jorah, there are good theories out there. But she will have to let go of everything willingly, I would yeah, say. Willingly. I hope so, willingly, in yeah. order for this will to break. And maybe the fact that she committed herself to fighting the White Walkers this season is kind of like to set us up as, mm. as fans, as viewers, to the fact that mm. she will have to choose something like that again and be like, wait, but... Uh, Okay, I mean, okay, I, I'll do the right thing. And it also maybe it's also maybe a setup for her to do something opposite. Yeah, like oh, okay, so now she's good, but no, now she's going back. Yeah, but I believe eventually she will be. Right, like, she will okay, redeem herself. She she, will, yeah. So in order for that to be dramatic, she has to do something wrong for her to need to redeem herself. If she's just like good all the way, I'm just like okay, now I just I gave up my dream and I will give up myself. So just like. It's not very interesting. Okay, so what do you think? Please mention in the comments. And if you want to get all our extra videos, we have a ton of them in the archive and we have a monthly extra video f just for you patrons. If you want to get access to that, go to patreon.com slash GOT Academy and subscribe to get all our videos. Thanks for watching. Bye, Tamar. Bye, everybody. Touch me, touch me, touch me, touch me. I wanna feel your body.